may the soul of our departed brothers be in perfect peace. And those who are injured, we are wishing them a speedy recovery. Let's be on our seat. Today is Tuesday, September 22, 2020. We are here. Okay. We are here to have an intercourse between the management team and the media. Um, what we are going to do now is to get to know the ratio the sedan die. That is the reason why we are gathered here. The purpose for our gathering. Probably the club Kumasi Santi Kotoko, as it stands now. And when the CEO, Nana Yawampansa, was unveiled a couple of weeks ago, what he's done so far, he will let us appreciate whatever he's done. And then he also do as the honest, but introducing people that in his considered opinion, he shares that when we are able to work together in unison, we can help him achieve the set target given him by the board of directors of Kumasiya Santi Kotoko. And there is a Latin expression that says that the legatus non potest delegari. When there is a specific function to be performed by an officer which is enshrined in law, no other person can perform that task unless that person himself. So at this time, I call on the CEO of Kumasi Asante Kotoko, Nana Yao Amponsa LLM, to come and share his vision with us. and also to introduce to you the gallant men and women that we have assembled to help us achieve our set targets. First and foremost, I'd like to thank the Almighty God for this opportunity, for bringing us here all together. Then I'd like to thank Kotun for our safety to of him so for the opportunity giving me and my team to serve as anti and as anti man for that matter. I'd also like to thank the Board of Directors of as anti led by His Honor Dr. Pami Che, for their trust and unflinching support thus far, making it possible, giving me the free hand to name my own management team. It is unprecedented, I believe, in a club like as anti and I am grateful to them. Before I start, uh, as you can rightly see the black armband on my arm, my brother Moses and Pipnefu uh, led us to have a one minute silence for our departed souls. I would like to pledge on behalf of the board and management and Atlantic Cultural Confraternity that we will donate 5,000 cities. care for the injured who are currently receiving treatment in hospital and when it's time for funeral for the departed souls we will also contribute our quota. Not long ago as Antikotoko found ourselves in a similar situation and all and sundry came to our aid. So it's important that we lead the charge to help our brothers and I call on all of Ghana football, other clubs, 
to help us put together some packages to help our junior brothers from the coast team, you know, revive and you know resurrect from such a tragedy. I was unveiled on the 7th of August 2020 as the CEO of Asante Kotoko. And I remember in my inaugural speech, I mentioned that Asante Kotoko is a club of great structures. I mean, if you hear the name and the might of Asante Kotoko, it needs no introduction. However, in content, say it could not be said on the club. So my task was to lead an able team to match the content with the superstructures that we have. And that is our core mandate, to make sure that how you see Asante Kotoko when you are outside, when you get in, it is the same that you are going to experience. For us, it's not about the superstructures. And I will reiterate, as I mentioned during my inaugural speech, that for me, a completed chamber and hall is better than an uncompleted mansion. As we can see, there are many scattered, uncompleted mansions around. Some takes decades, and they cannot be completed. Yet there are smaller structures that are functional and of good use to those who put them. We have a progression plan for Asante Kotoko for short to medium term. That spans three years that covers our mandate. And this short to medium term plan is to lay a solid foundation in terms of content to be able to build upon it going forward. What I discovered in my few months being here is that although many have come before me to build wonderful things for this club, there is no continuum in terms of transition. So people come and build, and when they go, it seems they go away with everything. Then whoever comes in starts from ground zero. That is something that cannot continue. It is important that we have structures and allow the structures to work. If I paraphrase President Obama, we do not need personalities. We don't need great personalities. We need great institutions to work. So things are coming, I mean, without my management, in the first one month, we've achieved a lot. I wouldn't want to go detail, detail into what we've achieved because for me, at the end of our 100 days, we will come again to you to enumerate all the things we've achieved. Today is the day of the Galacticos, as I call them. So I will start by introducing them. Then we'll go through a few updates, because I understand you media need updates, the club fraternity need updates. And it's not my style, to be honest with you, to go on radio all the time to be talking. And I have to make that clear from the onset. I don't believe in people who make promises while looking for a position. And then when they are given the positions, they continue to make promises. I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. Just do it. That is my style. Once you've been given the position, just deliver the job. So, without my ado, I'm going to start the introduction. It is, <laughs> when I look behind me, I, I, I am elated, I, am, I must say, to have such huge personalities. I've had calls, how did you get them together? How did you manage to convince them to come? Because some of them have taken 50% pay cut, some of them have taken 80% pay cut, to be here. I will start first and foremost with Mr. Emmanuel Newton Dasobery. <laughs> Mr. Dasobery was until recently a Deputy General Secretary of the Ghana Football Association, a manager of the club licensing. 
and he's well there for at least a decade. And he comes with such rich experience that you may not find anywhere in Ghana when it comes to his sector. For a club like Asante Kotoko, administratively, we need to be solid. Our compliance, we cannot falter. We have to ensure that the system of the office or the Secretariat of Asante Kotoko, its management and operations is second to none in Ghana and on the continent. So Mr. Dasobari comes in as the administrative and operations manager of Asante Kotoko. I know that the question will come, so what happened to those who played the role before? We've had to restructure a bit. So Madam Rose Badmore deputizes Mr. Dasobari as deputy in charge of administration, and Madam Lucy deputized as in charge of operations. Before I continue, I must state that Asante Kotoko is really understaffed, even with the new management. For an institution as huge as Asante Kotoko, if you want to really work in all departments and ensure that it functions correctly, you need the right fix. So that is Mr. Dasobari for you. Thank you, sir, for honoring our invitation to try and The next person I will introduce is Mr. Eric Amwagun Chung. Mr. Amwakuchum is our commercial manager. I remember when his name popped up, one astute football personality, uh, Mr. Ibrahim Sanidara, who used to be the communication manager of GFA, reached out to me and said, are you sure you got Eric? <laughs> Are you sure Eric will join Kotoko? With all that he's got going on for him, managing such a huge institution, are you sure he's going to leave it to come? And I said to him, Kotoko, are you awesome? When his royal majesty calls you to come and serve, even if you are the United States, United Nations, you have to come and serve. Eric comes in with rich experience in terms of the commercial side. He's worked with Tigo, he's worked with Nestle Ghana, managed huge departments. He's a great communicator. He cuts across. And I can tell you that even before he was announced, he's managed to help the clubs secure in principle the largest sponsorships within the Ghanaian football space. Already, I can tell you that the sponsorships that Eric has already negotiated is bigger than what we currently have. <laughs> Next to Eric is a uh, beautiful lady, Akosia Denta Amwati. It's very difficult for me to describe the entire because she is a woman of many colors. She cuts across so many sectors, but I'll try my best. For me, she, she is the foreign minister of Asante Kotoko. To be honest, she qualifies to be foreign minister of Ghana, no doubt. She is the founder of Guba, Guba Enterprise, if you've heard of Guba Awards, Guba Expos, UK, and several other Guba enterprises, that's the lady before us. She's a TV host. She's a member of the Ghana Tourism Board. She is a football person. I mean, I remember when uh, the Atawasting Foundation, right, went to FIFA, she, she, she was behind that. She's managed some superstars in our game. And when it comes to partnerships, international synergy, corporations, you, there's 
60 seconds to none. You must understand that Asante Kotoko have a huge diaspora fan base. And for the diaspora fans, I, I sometimes pity them. That was one of the reasons why we initiated the Haas Kotoko game in London, because some of them have been in Europe, America, outside Ghana for decades. And they've not had the opportunity to watch their darling club play. Some of us are privileged that we get to see our team play all the time. Some of them have missed the team. So we have to take the team to them. We have to give them the opportunity, create the enabling environment for them to contribute the Akota to the development of this massive club and also to ensure that they feel belonged to the club. So that's all, all we can say is thank you so much. I know people don't believe you're here in person, but <laughs> there she is. We are grateful. We are grateful. <laughs>
And I'm looking forward to Nilo coming to Ghana soon, and I'm sure you're going to see him around. So we thank Nilo, even though he's not here. We are grateful to him. I'm sure you'll see the tapes. For accepting to serve Kotoko, despite his huge shadow. I mean, for somebody who has won over 25 cars cases, over 100 FIFA cases, over 30 from the uh, basketball uh, federation. I mean, he's such a busy person, but he has agreed to work for us at Kotoko, and I'm grateful to him. Next on the list is a gentleman I call Jack of all trades, master of all, David Obinyao. <laughs> Until recently, David was the general manager of Ofakwatano, another huge club. He was the communications director of Bronga Afu Football Association. He was a member of the Division One League Board. He was a member of the Division One League Advisory Committee. At his age, he's achieved it all. But this man, being so humble, agreed to come on board as special assistant to the CEO. And that is a very significant position because I, as CEO, needed somebody who sees through my lens, somebody who understands my vision, to be close to me so that we can together help the team move in the right direction. And it was going to be very difficult to convince David because there were a lot of offers on his table, but I shared the vision with him and he bought into it right away. And so I am so elated. I mean, to mention, recently, you've seen the surge in our imaging, our graphics, our you know, communications, in terms of social media, etc. He is the brain behind it. And David, the reason I call him Jack of all trades is that, no disrespect, he qualifies to be in the administrative wing. He qualifies to be in the communication wing. He qualifies to be, even on a technical side, he, he has immeasurable knowledge and experience at his age. And so I am grateful to him for accepting to be on the team. David, I'm grateful. The next person is the money man. I call him the money man. Thomas Sebozi, our finance manager. Asante Kotoko, as a club, has a huge budget. But currently, our budget is not 5% what it should be. In my previous life as a player's agent, I took players from Ghana to clubs like Al Ali, Zamale, Raja Casablanca. And these players were receiving minimum. $30,000 a month as salary. And each time I said to myself, how come Kotoko and the clubs in Ghana are not able to attain this height? Sound financial management is key. We can go and secure all the sponsorships that we want. We can fill the stadium. We can have so much money if there's, we don't have that sound financial management. It's not going to go anywhere. So, and also, you know, as part of club licensing, we needed somebody of his caliber to be part of the team for us to be compliant to the club licensing. He's coming with huge experience, like David, like uh, Akia, like PJ. He's worked in Kumasi for more than seven years. So he's a homeboy. He's coming in to help us manage our finances well. He's coming in to help us develop sound financial models that will help Kotoko reach the highs that we want to attain. <laughs> like the others, if I tell you the portfolios is left behind, it's amazing. But he also believes in the Kotoko dream. So Thomas, we can't thank you enough. We are grateful for honoring this call. Then, <laughs> the man himself, he introduced me earlier and I have to introduce him now. Moses and Replayful PJ Moses. He 
It was also a difficult one to get. DJ, without missing words, for me, is the best sports journalist host I've encountered. He's true to his word. He's fair and firm. Without fear or favor. He says it as it is. And if you are going to succeed in such a role, you need somebody that can look into your eyes and tell you the truth. Somebody that can speak truth to power. How we manage as anti-cultural communication is very important. And when I talk about anti-cultural communication, it's not just about a spokesperson. You know, sometimes people, you know, use those interchangeably. Communications manager is a different role, far bigger than a spokesperson. We need to manage our communication very well. You see, Kotoko Express, for instance, is struggling, but it shouldn't. The Kotoko Express should be challenging the lives of Daily Graphic, Daily Guide, and Co. Because we have the numbers. If we manage our communication well, there's no way we should not be challenging them. But where we give our communication out for free, people find out first from other sources. They don't need to go to Kotoko Express or Kotoko App to find out. So we need to, as a club, manage our information flow very well. And if you're going to do that, you need somebody who is astute and understands the vision. PJ, until recently, was a head of media and communication at JMPC Foundation. It took me <laughs> so long to get him to come. He is one of the reasons why the naming of the management team took a while. Because you can imagine somebody working at GMPC, comfortable, why would he leave that to come to Kotoko? But of course, Kotoko is the biggest institution in Ghana. And we should be able to assemble the best on the pitch and off the pitch. So PJ, knowing the dream, left everything to be here. And so I want you to help me thank him. PJ, we are grateful. Now that I've introduced my team, I would like to thank the President of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Dodanko Akufuado, the Sports Minister, Honorable Isaac Kwame Siama, the GFA President Keto Kreku and his team for putting in the effort to ensure the resumption of football. I mean, I never thought I was going to miss football like that. As a football professional, it got to a point I was getting bored. I was getting bored because you wake up, every day is football. I could watch four games on a truck, but when, due to COVID, we couldn't play. It became so difficult living without it. So I thank them for giving us the opportunity to resume the game. I also like to thank again as I take on the board. We hear so many rumors. And listen, I know that I am not speaking a lot like others would do. I know this is my first engagement after the unveiling. But that does not mean, my brothers and sisters, to throw out rumors and all manner of things and let people jump on it. It is your duty to inform the people and inform them accurately. I see this craze about breaking the news first. And it's worrying. It should be who broke the accurate news and not who broke it first. But there is this craze about people wanting to break news first and they want to throw anything out there for traction, for lies. For... Listen, credibility is very important. While growing up, I thought everything I heard on radio or TV was the truth. But I've grown to understand that a lot of it is not true. There was a day I was lying in my bed in Accra, thinking about myself, and I was just surfing Facebook and I got into Facebook Live of one of the stations. And a man hit his chest and said, 
Mais nous, nous avons pensé à nous pensions au Menchia. Et il swore on his father's grave that I was at Menchia. I said, what does one achieve by throwing such false news out there? What do you achieve? So I will plead with you all that report what is accurate. In the absence, I know sometimes the devil finds work for idle hands, and in a vacuum, people try to create things. Writing well is very important. One of my visions as CEO of Asante Protocol is that if I spend three, four, five years in this position, by the time I leave this position, I shouldn't have only improved Kotoko playing body and staff, but the media landscape must also improve. So whatever we are going to do as a club, financially, resource-wise, to improve the media, we are going to do. Because if we are doing things right, and some people are reporting wrongly or misinforming people, not because maybe they want to do, but they do not understand the ethics of the job, or they do not know how to do it right, then we are going to contribute to help them do it right. Because when they do it right, we all benefit. If Kotoko grows, every media house in Ghana grows. If you go across the borders to South Africa here, media people are moving from one channel to another for over a million dollars. Why can't we have 10% of that here in Ghana? So it is important that as a foreign state of the realm, we do it right. Recently, I was shocked. A gentleman from a respected media house came to meet me as a player's manager. He came in his capacity as a player's manager to engage me to negotiate for his player. He asked me our plans for the boy, how the boy fits into our club, and our vision for the next two years. As the CEO of Kotoko, I had to show him what we have for the boy. And guess what? The next day, this respected newspaper published that the guy had interviewed me. Can you imagine that? Quoting me. If this is not disgraceful, I don't know what it is. We need to do things right. It doesn't cost a thing to do things right. So I'm just pleading with all of you that let's report right. Now let's go into the Club Asante Kotoko. And let me admonish all of you. If you are expecting me to say that when I came, there was this problem there, there was that problem, and this and that, I'm sorry to disappoint you. I did not come into the job to speak about problems of the past. If everything was smooth, I wouldn't be here. I was brought here for the present and the future. So I, what is more important to me is the present and the future. I can assure you all team supporters that with the support of the board, the board have approved that within the next three months we have an ultra-modern training complex at Adakojachi. The board unanimously bought into the vision. So we are going to put up a fantastic prefab project at Adakojachi. Within three months, it's going to be done. I have been to clubs in Europe, South America, who run over 40 million, 50 million dollars budget. And they have prefab projects like that. Going forward, you are going to see images, the 3D images of these, this magnificent project. And then you would understand the direction of the club. To attract the right players, we need to have such facilities in place. It is important that we do. So this forms part of our short and medium term plan. To the playing body, I've, I know you've been following the news, this player has been released, that player is being released. The truth of the matter is that when I came in as Santiago, we had 38 players on our books. We cannot continue in that direction. We are going to have 
a maximum of 30 players. Our first target is 28 players. We are going by a model of 4884. What that means is we're going to have four goalkeepers, eight defenders, eight midfielders, and four strikers. Then, then we are going to have four youth players because there is a lacuna or a restriction in the Ghana football regulatory regime which does not allow youth players of a team to also feature for the senior side. If you go to other jurisdictions, a player can play for the youth side and still play for the senior side. Even senior players, when they are recovering from injuries, when they are deep, forms deep, they go to the youth side. But we don't have that situation in Ghana currently. So we're going to have four youth, exciting youth players, making 28. However, we know that in every team there are some stars that attract, sponsorship attract the fans. So we have two slots for such players as well, making a maximum of 30. The reason it's important to have a smaller squad is for us to cater for them well, to pay them the right salaries, to give the coaches opportunity to have effective training systems. Because imagine that you have 38 players and you go for training. How many teams are you going to form to allow everybody? And how does the coaches get time to pay attention to each individual player? So it's important that we reduce the squad. Of course, there are players that will leave and will simply money train them. If they perform, we'll bring them back. It's happening in many, many places. Pogba left Man United, went to Juventus, he came back. So, for us, I don't want you to feel that we've come in and we are just trying to get players out. No. It is important that we have a solid team. Cut or cost, you have the best team in Ghana. And that is what we intend to help the technical team to do. We need a solid youth system that we cannot compromise. Football is about the youth. If you'll be able to retain good senior players, pay them well, you need to focus on the youth. Because our football economy is partly export, or predominantly export. But these people from other jurisdictions who come to buy our players do not like the older ones. They like the youth. So imagine you sell one youth player for $300,000, $500,000. Can't you pay the first team well to retain them? Will they be going to Ethiopia? Will they be going to Tanzania and co? So we need to also have a youth team because we need to develop players who have the Asante Kotoko fabric in them, embedded in them right from the start. So that, because you see, there are good players that you go and buy and bring. And because they've not been closer to the Kotoko team, the euphoria, you know, the numbers overwhelms them. You put them at the commercial stadium with 40,000 capacity and they shake. But when you have a solid youth team and these boys are coming through, they've already experienced Asante Kotoko. That is why somebody like Mason Greenwood, Rashford, and rest can come into my youth team and they will play. Because they've been in and around the team and they, they have, they've already experienced that atmosphere. So it's important that we build a core team. And our medium and long term goal is to have a young team. <laughs> Imagine a Wafa kind of team backed by Asante Kotoko supporters. You can imagine the things we can do. I know we cried our hearts once, beat us 4-0, but Wafa beat them 5-0. So if we want to reverse that, we need a Wafa kind of team. I know that the supporters can be impatient and all that, but listen, currently, Borussia Dortmund have three players leading the attack, and they are 20 years, 17 and 17, genuine age. So we need the young players to build a strong team. And that will only mean the supporters will have to be patient for us to build something solid. Rome was not built in a day. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So we would call on the supporters to be patient. I've heard calls that, oh, management, and social media, and I'm not dressing. It's football all about one match. 
Barcelona were beaten 8 2 recently by, by Munich. Is it all about one match? If it's all about one match, then we shouldn't be here. It should be about the solid foundation on which we can all build. That is what it should be about. We will win most of our matches, we will draw a few, and we will lose a few. But the bottom line is that we're going to win the league anyway. Kotoko winning league in Ghana is no news. We we'll win the league, we we'll win the FA Cup. Even Champions League, if we win Champions League tomorrow, it's no news. It's been done before. Kotoko has won Champions League twice. If we win it this season, does it mean that it's the end of the road? Nottingham Forest won Champions League back to back. Check the records. Where are they now? Aston Villa won Champions League. Where are they now? So we need to build structures that will stand the test of time. That is the most important thing. And if during our tenure we build that structure, and those who come after us come to win the Champions League, World Cup Championships, that is what we are looking for. Progression. Not to go back to ground zero. So we need the understanding of all and sundry. We need your commitment, your goodwill, to be able to build on the foundation we met. Kotoko, as a club, needs a technical team that is well resourced. So you will see that yesterday it was announced by Insta Scout and subsequently Asante Kotoko that we've signed a partnership deal with Insta to have our statistics in place. It is important that we're able to scout players properly. It's important that we're able to review our performances, review that of our opponents, scout our opponents properly. It's important that we build a solid database for our players so that we can monitor their progression, whether they are, you know, developing well or they are, there is diminishing returns. It's important that we have these systems in place. There's another partnership we've signed. I'm not going to announce it now. In the same space, that will be announced in a couple of days. All this is to resource our technical team. I know some of you will say, well, Yankofa Bruni, Yankofa Bruni. You see, when we go and bring these white coaches, we give them all that they ask for. If they ask for a dietitian, you give them. Physio, you give them. This camera, you give them. Everything, you give them. But when you have one of your own and you know he needs these things or they need these things to function properly, you are not willing to give them. You are setting them up to fail. So we are going to back our technical team. We are going to recruit the best of players for them. We are going to give them the best resources to function effectively. When you are giving them all that and they are not functioning, then you can query them. Because you don't send a man to the farm without cutlass or hoe and blame him for not being able to weed. So we are going to empower our technical team. We are going to beef up the technical team. Because there are several departments within the technical team, especially the medical side that we need to equip and resource. And that is exactly what we are going to do. I can tell you here and now that we are about 90% through signing a partnership deal with an EPL club, English Premier League club. There used to be a partnership deal between us and Kotoko and Sunderland. We are going to sign with another English Premier League club. What we sought to do is to plug Kotoko into that EPL club. Whatever they have there, we need to have it here. If not in the same size, but a replica. We're going to have that. We are going to link, as part of the partnership, our technical team to their technical team. Our youth setup to their youth setup. That English Premier League club has about the best academy in England and arguably the world. They've produced superstars. So our youth setup is going to plug into their youth setup. We're going to have exchange programs. Our commercial side is going to plug into their commercial side. 
We are even going to syndicate for sponsorships together. Our administrative setup is going to plug into the administrative setup to ensure that we have a functioning team. Our supporters, front, the trust, is going to plug into this. So we run Kotoko as a professional unit. It's good to have such synergies, it's good to have such relationships and partnerships so you can have that economies of scale and benefit from same. I am also happy to tell you that with just under two months, maybe six weeks of being unveiled as a CEO, we have secured in principle, as I mentioned earlier, about three to four, four to be confirmed today, huge sponsorships. <laughs> that are equal and even some even bigger than what we currently have. But let's listen carefully. Sustainability of sponsorship is key. A sponsor can come and put in so much money. But if you do not give them the mileage they require, they will not be able to generate the revenue they need to be able to pump more money into your endeavors or activities. So it's important as fans and stakeholders of the club that when sponsors come on board, we do everything. Let me tell you the trick about sponsorship. And the reason why currently sponsors will wake up at 5.30 a.m. and ask for a meeting or send proposals and ask for a reply is because we are offering them five to 10 times what they are giving us, or what we are asking for. So when they give you the money and you don't give them at least three times what they are giving you, they will go away. And then you'll be back to zero. We should be able to sign sponsorship partnerships that we improve. I have worked in the sponsorship business in the UK, finding sponsorship for Premier League, Premier League clubs, Premier League referees. And some partnerships can go as far 10, 12 years, and it's always improved because the sponsors are getting their mileage and the business is booming, and so they plow some back into the club. So I'm calling on the supporters that every sponsor we bring on board, you have to take it as your own. Patronize their products. You can even use your own Facebook page to promote them. It doesn't cost a thing because it's your contribution to Kotoko. As I said earlier on, we have plans that at the end of 100 days in office, we will come to you with all the things we've achieved, including securing a good domain like asantikotoko.com. There is only one asantikotoko in the world. We are going to have a brilliant website. We're going to build IT solutions that will stand the test of time. And trust me, what we are planning and trying to do for Kotoko, with your support, with your support, you'll be amazed what you see in the next six months. We cannot afford to fail. I recently said that Kotoko is a gold mine. Yes, it is. You may see a man holding a bar of gold and assume that he is good at mining gold because he's holding gold. He may not have mined it himself. So if you assume that that man has the capabilities to mine the gold and so you put him into your gold mine, he will waste all his gold, he will come out with nothing. But if you get skilled miners, like this imminent personality behind me, there is no way you cannot identify and mine the gold within Asante Kotoko. And if you own a gold mine, you should not go with your bowl or plate asking for help. 
donations. How many companies in Ghana have the customer base that Kotoko has? We estimate to have between 12 and 15 million fan base. But we need to have that database well established. That is why we are going to institute the Fabulous Census Project. The project is to register at least one million supporters in the first three years. We are going to make these supporters feel part of the club, to contribute to the club. There are Ghanaians, Kotoko fans, who contribute to Real Madrid, Liverpool. They pay their monthly dues. So we need to create an enabling environment for them to do so. However, people will only contribute if there is trust between them and the club. Yes. And they know that when they put in 10 Ghana cities every month, it's going to go into that project. And it's going to go into recruiting the best of players for them, to make them happy. What are the support I want? A happiness, a win. They know they will not win all the time, but they don't want to lose terribly. So we need to earn the trust of the supporters who must be treated as customers, first and foremost. And once you treat the supporters as customers, they will continue to patronize the products you have. So I'm calling on all of you that don't let me stand here and speak all the English. There's only one Kotoko that we have. And we all contribute to build it to levels that will be enviable on this continent. I call on you to help us achieve. Because, as I said, these imminent personalities have left all they are doing come and help us build the brand. Let's not sit on radio and denigrate this, the, the brand. Let's not speak evil of it. No, It's true. We need to speak well of the club. Go through the right channels, your leadership, to us. And we'll explain. Men, do not be Men, say. Adia. So I'll thank you for coming. I'll take a seat and welcome questions. I'm sure that's my boss's job. So I thank you for having me and long live as let, let's, let's put our hands together for a CEO of Kumasi Asante for the Panaya Ponsan. The Venerable CEO, the eminent CEO, is giving us an eloquent speech. I'm tired, honestly.